Despite being over one year old, the iPhone 10 manages to be as modern as ever. The chinless design manages to look a lot better than whatever this is. And at a price point of around $700, essentially half the price of a 10s Max, you'd be wondering what makes the iPhone 10 so antiquated. Like, why is it so cheap? Well, in this one year late review of the iPhone 10, we're gonna both find out if this phone is worth it today for a mid-range level price and how it compares to the new iPhones, the 10s and 10s Max. So let's get into it. They look the same. There's a new color. It's kind of ugly. You're not gonna notice a difference. They both run iOS 12. That runs great on six-year-old devices. There's not much of a difference, unless you zoom in a lot and compare them side by side and have a really good monitor to compare them with and give a shit. Okay, so now that you've established the new iPhones are pointless except for the good one, we can talk about how the iPhone 10 has lasted within the last year and how it works today. So let's get on that. Starting with the design, I do like the look of this phone quite a bit. Considering the monstrosities coming out of the Android side of things, I'd say Apple is ahead of the whole notched phone design thing, for now. My main issue with this design is the breakability of the phone. This is my second iPhone X, I've already broken one of these. The first one shattered upon a waist height drop, and then the camera stopped focusing properly. After the focusing issues came about, I had my phone replaced. Though just after a few weeks of usage without a case, I've already scratched the f out of my phone. I feel like since my pockets are made of sandpaper and gravel, my phone shouldn't look like this after just a few weeks. I don't keep my keys in the same pocket. I do everything that you should do, except for have a case, because I'm stubborn, but I don't know. I've really messed this phone up already. This simply was not an issue for me on the older iPhones, even the ones with glass backs like the iPhone 4S, as with that phone, you can replace the glass back quite easily, and on this phone, you can't, unless you have some industrial chemicals just lying around, as you do, and you freeze the phone down to the point where you've permanently broken your battery, and then you can slowly chip off the glass with a pry tool and hope you don't freeze or burn your fingers or take off a limb. It's definitely very reasonable. I'm really glad phones are like that these days. It's annoying because Apple focuses so much time, money, and effort into making these phones look really good and then you're just supposed to slap an ugly case on it and call it a day. Unless you're like me, because I'm extremely stubborn and have refused to use cases for as long as I've had an iPhone. The Apple A11 paired with three gigabytes of RAM and this phone are more than enough to decimate the competition in most tasks. Only being beaten by the A12, though not by much. And as mentioned earlier, iOS 12 runs great even on six year old phones. So the iPhone X specs are no area of concern, it's basically just headroom for the future updates. iOS 12 is simultaneously disappointing and a godsend. iOS 11 was quite the minimal update, yet it managed to screw a lot of things up. iPhones started having crashes and slowdowns. So Apple's solution was to hold off on a new iOS redesign and instead make iOS 12 a speed and stability update, and it worked quite well. That being said, iOS 12 is boring. You have the same slates of unchangeable icons, and everything is just extremely locked down, and there's not much you can do about that. Thankfully, you don't spend all your time looking at a home screen. You spend your time in apps, and that's where the iPhone 10 really makes its strides. My combination of daily use apps happen to be quite battery intensive, but the iPhone 10 doesn't break a sweat. Not only do I never have to deal with performance issues, but I also average around 9 hours of screen on time, meaning I don't have to charge my phone every night. The camera on this phone is simply... My faulty heater just kicked on, so I probably look like I'm sweating, because I am, so that's a great look. I'm glad they'll be on the internet forever. Anyway, the camera on this phone is simply great. I usually carry a proper camera around with me, but when I don't, I can stay confident that my iPhone 10 will produce images that are usable. The 4K video coming out of this phone is so good that I would be comfortable using it professionally. In fact, I did. A lot of the B-roll you see in my latest documentary was filmed on the iPhone X because I was so time constrained while filming that at points I had no time to do anything but whip out my phone and click record. 
Anyway, let me give you guys a few examples of photo and video quality coming out of this phone. So, here you go. The iPhone X has aged incredibly well and still outpaces the competition in some ways. <coughs> I think Apple might have pulled a few too many tricks out of their sleeve with the release of the iPhone X last year, as this year's iPhones are such a small upgrade over the iPhone X that I don't even know why anyone would go out and upgrade from an iPhone X to the XS, XS. So at an average price of $650 to $800 on eBay, I'd say go for the 10 over the 10s, assuming you're not on an upgrade plan. Though if you do want a new iPhone and there's nothing wrong with that, I'd say go for the 10R, as that's the best phone Apple's released this year in my opinion. Anyway, that'll be it for this video. I want to hear what you guys think about the iPhone 10 or an Android alternative, so leave a comment down below, I read every single comment. Make sure you like and subscribe and maybe click the notification bell as I've heard that's worked every Tuesday on a leap year, so try it out. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, I'll see you in the next video, bye.